You know that sound, and would you That's believe beautiful. this, Pat's pals and Foxborough faithful, you are now just 20 days away at time of recording from the start of training camp 2023. You are just over two months away from the start of the 2023 season, and while this is technically still the great in-between slow season before football season gets cranked up. There's always plenty to talk about on Six Rings and Football Things. Good day. How are you? Your old pal Nick Fitzy Stevens here anchoring the program alongside our beat writer for the New England Patriots at WEEI.com. He's been everywhere lately. Holy trial by fire, Batman. This All over the place. Baptized by the River Odyssey. This is Mike Cadlick. Uh, Mike, today on the show, we'll, uh, in a strange turn of events, talk about the latest with Dalvin Cook and DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, wow, my, that's haven't new. Heard, <laughs> haven't heard those names since the last time we talked and the time before that and the time before that. We'll get to Mike's latest pieces on the offensive line as well as a position group that someone actually thinks, or rather a very popular outlet believes, could be the sneaky hidden weapons of the Patriots offense this season. A fascinating tweet from Warren Sharp with a stat that'll blow your mind and how we believe it can relay and pertain to the Patriots. And then a theory floated by our own Andy Gresh on the Midday Show as to what Bill Belichick is going to do over the next couple of seasons and why he's doing it. All right, so let's just get it right out of the way, Mike. Right now, as I blogged yesterday for WEI.com, your New England Patriots are the betting favorites to land DeAndre. Hopkins Alrighty. and running back Dalvin Cook. And that's the latest that we know. We know nothing else <laughs> aside from the fact that DeAndre Hopkins, per Jeremy Fowler on Espen, recently said that he knew the meeting went well. DeAndre Hopkins definitely interested in New England. Mutual interest still remains. He's going to probably wait until just before training camp to sign any place. Kansas City's lurking. Uh... And as far as Dalvin Cook goes, at this point now, we know he has liked a number of tweets suggesting that money is not going to be an issue and the Patriots could and should go out and spend the money on him. But at the same time, he has also liked, I can't believe we're like following the likes. As everyone abandons Twitter and heads over to threads, here we yeah. are still following the are likes. Are you on threads yet, Fitzy? I am not on threads yet. Today right. probably is going to be the day. How about you? Are you a threads guy now? Yeah, I, I was on it last night. I'm... So what are, building what are we, my what following are we back up? We, do we have to it's maintain both now? Do I have to tweet? What see Twitter? You tweet on Twitter. What do you? Yes. What do you say? Do, did, I don't want to say thread. I, I don't think you thread on threads. I think you just post. It's it's lame, but I think you is just it. Did post you catch my thread. post? Did you catch my thread? Maybe. Yeah. Check it, out this thread because the thread yeah, is different. Check out this thread. Maybe. Yeah. <sighs> I, I I just hope and pray that it just slowly fades into the night and we just all get back on Twitter again. Because like Mastodon Twitter was a too thing. Much. This is going to be so upsetting for you. This is going to be so upsetting I know. So I was talking about you. it on the old, the old WEEI airwaves with you this weekend or earlier this week in between Glizzy Talk about how I just cannot stand the fact that Twitter is going to go away. It's my pride and joy. I love it. I sit on it all day. And now I have to do both. I got to go scroll back and forth from threads to Twitter now. And it's just a pain in the beat. I don't know but. if there's going to be any way, con especially considering threads is owned by Meta, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook yep. Incorporated, that particular evil empire. And we'll see. You know what should happen? What should happen is this. Uh, and there's no way that, you know, because they're competitors, there's no way you can't post to Twitter. Like you could used to be able to like link up. Like when I post to Instagram, since IG is also Facebook yep. in the Meta family. That's the way I let everyone, the only reason why I still Facebook is to let people know, like, here's the kids, here's the family, right. here's what's going on in my personal life. Uh, for those people, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents and relatives that are still on Facebook and use it actively. Uh, you can't tweet and then have it jump over to threads, nope. which means you're going to have to have concurrent, you're going to have to cut and copy and paste. So here's what I'm suggesting. If and when there is a charity sort of boxing match, MMA cage fight between elon musk and mark zuckerberg the winner's platform remains and the loser's platform is done they have to fight for whichever messaging app reigns supreme that it I has like it. to be it has to come that down works. to that that makes a lot of sense or it's it's one of those things where it's the same concept threads and tweet twitter are the same thing it's just quick blurbs thoughts like not instagram related so just 
combine them and just make it like the town square. And you don't need to compete. No. Like you said, they're not. Sorry, the same. Not you the sound. Same. You know what you sound like. You sound like a child of divorce right now. Like uh, mom and dad, if we could jet, like no, 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 no. Why do we have to go to war? Like why right. can't we just all have fun and well, get along? No, they, we can't. They, you literally can't be at dad's yeah. new apartment and mom's house at the same time. Like you have to go from one yep. to the other. Hate yeah, to say it. They may share custody of you, mm-hmm. but you have to be at one place or the other. It's just never going to be the same again. It's terrible. So as we follow the likes of Dalvin Cook, he has yes. liked tweets from the Miami Dolphins about their restructure of Cam Smith, freeing up some salary cap space for them. Should they make a move? Dalvin Cook, obviously a Florida native, went did his college time at Florida State. And he's also liked some tweets from the New York Jets as well. So it seems like this is a three-horse race for Dalvin Cook, Patriots, Jets, and the Miami Dolphins as of present. It's a two-horse race right now per fowler between the Titans and the Patriots for DeAndre Hopkins services. Although I still think, and I think a lot of us believe, another team or two will likely get in the mix. I want them to go for, I want them to sign both. I want the Patriots. And I think this will definitely play into uh, Andy Gresh's theory that we'll get in the second leg of the podcast. But I want them to choose chaos. I want them to choose aggression. I want them to make a little room. If you had to, who else would we have to possibly you know, do a little fuzzy math with Mike. Who else would need like a restructure or a contractual tinkering to free up the room for the Patriots to get both? So you have a legit number one receiver. Yeah. And then a two back attack that'll keep a lot of off a lot of defensive coordinators up at night. Well, going back to what you said about Fowler's consistent reporting on Hopkins and Cook, I feel like every single day. Jeremy Fowler gets on ESPN and says the same exact thing about DeAndre Hopkins, the same exact thing about Dalvin Cook, and we all take it as if it's a different update. Right. And he's just regurgitating the same thing, that Dalvin Cook would be interesting to pair with Ramondre. There's no real, like, there was no meeting between the two yet. There's no reported interest. It's just Fowler saying that, hey, maybe they could be interested. And then as far as Hopkins Yeah, it's like source speculation, which is a whole like a different form of actual. It's not reportedly. It's... Sources right. tell me they might be interested. Oh, well, that's sorciolation or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And like, there was no- the very first thing he reported was basically, yeah, teams told me that they think the Patriots may be interested. And in, it's like it it was all it was very fuzzy. So there's been a little bit more intrigue talk on there. The Hopkins thing, they're just going to both of these guys are just going to wait this out, I think. And um, as far as Dalvin Cook liking tweets, I think he's just trying to drive up his market via mm-hmm. his own just do his just own so, play in the market like platform. trying to like gain a little leverage trying to drive yeah. up some interest like hey this team might be interested in me this team right you know for the right price i'll stop liking those tweets and come play football for you exactly but as far as restructuring and um guys that you can sort of move money around for first of all the parker deal and the bentley deal extending those guys and moving some whatever i mean the parker deal again felt like more of a pay cut but bentley more money up front, spreading out their signing bonus across years, uh, reducing their cap number for this season. You can also do that with guys like Hunter Henry, who's in a contract year. You could probably do it with Matthew Judon, who's in a contract year. Uh, or is Judon? No, I think Judon no, has two years. He's got two. He's got two years. But that's left. still a guy you can restructure. Um, maybe spread him out, add another year, rework the deal. <clears throat> excuse me, rework the deal and. Uh, upfront some of that money yeah so make create a little more make, space right create some money uh this year so i look to uh definitely henry and definitely jude on his guys who you could potentially manipulate or even mike Owenu, kyle duggar josh uche if you ever want to make those deals happen you can kind of kill two birds with one stone extend those three pillars and also make some space for a guy like hopkins a guy like cook who i i agree with you i think if i had to choose one i would choose deandre hopkins but if you can make both work for short money and it gets closer, closer to the the beginning of training camp and neither guy's market is really going sky high and they both have to take less money, bring both guys in, make it work. And your offense is absolutely cooking. So again, we'll see how it plays out. It's we're regurgitating the same information we've mm-hmm. talked about for weeks now, but if it can work, make it happen. And that's the latest on Hopkins <laughs> and cook watch 2023. Um, actually between the two and yeah, you mentioned Mike on when you between Uche, Duggar and on the three guys uh, all up for new deals next season, I would probably rank them in order of likelihood of being signed or ext- uh, to a new deal. Duggar, Uche on I think yeah, the I writing agree. was on Completely the wall agree. 
even with Marte Mapu in the fold, I think that's the kind of uh, hybrid defender in the modern NFL that Bill Belichick wants on his defense, no matter who else is around. But when you see them go after City So and Antonio yeah. Mafi with Onwenu on the books, haven't heard any talk of him holding out or anything else. He know he's going to ball out this year. Probably have right. his if he's healthy. Watch him have his best year to date. Go get Joe Tooney money somewhere else, and then you slide one, if not both, of those hosses in on the line someplace, and the Pats will have you know symmetry along the line, and yeah. they shouldn't miss a beat, or at least you may hope not. But as far as Cook and Hopkins, see, I'm now leaning towards wanting. Dalvin Cook more because yeah you're a big important. Dalvin Cook guy all of a sudden I am huh? I love I noticed I've, that the last I've always been days. a fan ever since his college days I've always coveted him I've always admired his game I, I had him on fantasy watch him IRL I think he's a dynamite football player um, however uh, the reason why I think I may be more interested in Mr. Cook now as opposed to uh, D Hop is this tweet that we discussed the other day on the radio which I've sort of now examined and expanded on a little mm -hmm. bit. This was the Warren Sharp tweet about yep. uh, with the stats of Patrick Mahomes air yards over the last four seasons, how in 2019 his touchdowns, the average air yards of his TD passes were set over 17 yards. Then it went down to 13, 2021, it was eight and a half air yards. And in 2022 Mahomes had 41 touchdown passes Four, that's no small, no. that's no small number. And they traveled a, an average of 4.5 air yards, meaning basically 185 air yards total over 41 touchdown passes. No one of them longer than 19, 19 yards was the longest. That's bizarre. Which it's crazy. But what that tells me is even in the modern NFL, where we're supposed to spread them and shred them and the fantasy footballification, and we need a deep threat and we need an AJ Brown and we need a Devontae Smith and we need this kind of possession receiver and this guy. 15 yards downfield, 30 yards downfield. We need yep. long bombs, field stretchers. No, you don't. You need crafty, deceptive, unique, intricate play design, which you obviously got from B enemy and Andy Reed. You yep. do need a quarterback who can be improvisational, think quick on his feet, use his athletic gifts and graces to the best of his ability. And then you just have to be willing to go with wherever you can get space and trust get your playmakers in space. In space. Yep. Because like we talked about, who were his targets last year? You had one elite target. One. Yeah. That was Travis Kelsey. Otherwise, it was Valdez Scantling, Juju Smith-Schuster. Tipping point. This is how it goes back to the Patriots. Juju. Isaiah Pacheco, Jarek McKinnon, Clyde edwards Elaire, Sky Moore, Kadarius Toney. Dude, that is hardly right. the offense that keeps you up at night. It's Mahomes. And it's a bunch of just shifty guys. It's a bunch of small shifty guys who it's not. Again, they're burners, but the way they design their offense, and I know that's what we're going to get to, it's a lot of, you know, early early yardage, 5, 10 yards, get these guys the ball in space and let them work on their own. It's not a drop back, five 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 step drop, you know, crossing routes, 10, 20, 30. No, no, no not field. a lot of hospital balls, not a lot right. of deep seams the way Peyton used to throw it. Like, yeah, you basically are just trusting Mahomes to make the right read or make the right moves with his feet. And then it's a flick. It's not it's the an... Patrick Mahomes we saw three years ago where he was no, slinging the ball works. 55. Exactly. Right. It's highly, like his ability to be able to keep plays alive and extend plays with his feet mixed yep. with Reed's play calling, Mahomes' ability to deliver the ball from any arm slot, any arm angle, whatever, underhand, pitch, sideways, no look, whatever the hell he needs to do. Right. No one is saying there's any other quarterback like him. Mac Jones does not have that ability, nor does he have the laser rocket arm, the hose cannon of like a Justin Herbert. However, he does join, uh, as we saw in another tweet, he does join uh, Herbert and Joe Burrow as the only quarterback in the first two years of their career to have 65% and over completion percentage. So Mac is accurate. Yep. Now you, now you put Mac in with the wide receivers that we have now on the team and the tight ends and this fleet of backs and, if you could add a Dalvin Cook in there as well, which would lend so much unpredictability with the two of them in for with Ramondre and Cook in there as well, and you look to that offense, that is what I want the Patriots to do. I'm not looking for, oh my God, another 73 yarder to Tyquan Thornton touchdown. Kendrick right. Bourne, 56 for six. No, I put it in these guys' hands. That's right. all you need to do. Juju Smith Schuster, Yak Monster, Kendrick Bourne, great root runner, very creative, tough after the catch. All these backs, let Bill O'Brien cook. Let him get let him get funky. Let him get weird. 
Let him take a look at what has worked for himself over his many decades of play calling across college and the pros. That's the off to me. That's the offense people need to be vulturing from. What did the right. Chiefs do last year to be such a vaunted offense without having to air it out all the time, yet somehow consistently get it in the six-point house? And we can transition that even further into our next topic, which is the tight end room. Because years yes. ago, when it was Tyreek Hill, and it was uh, basically it was the Tyreek Hill show in Kansas City, and it was mm -hmm. 70 yards out, he would run a triple move. And he would end mm -hmm. up in the end zone for 70 yards. And that's why his yep. air yards per touch. Hard, Hardman, so Hardman was what part of the fleet of Correct. bombers. They would look yeah. longer to Kelsey as well. And so now, again, they're they're dinking and dunking to the end to the goal line. And yes. then you get within five yards. And Travis Kelsey had his career high in 12 with 12 touchdowns last year. So right. if the Patriots can, again, copy that type of type of offense with Juju using your two tight ends. And then when you get down there, you have Hunter Henry and Mike Kosicki, who are two great red zone threats. Hunter yes. Henry specifically being Mac Jones is basically binky the last two years. He and look at the, and the athletic ability, the athletic ability of Mike Kosicki, the wide receiver right. in tight ends clothing. He can out jump everyone on the team. He's yep. already naturally six, five like you use your, use your matchups, like let defenses worry. And that's Bill O'Brien's whole thing. Match exactly. Up. I, I Super I Bowl. Up. You're getting me excited, Fitz. I, dude, I'm fired up. This is how you get Mac Jones over yeah. my over under of 28 and a half touchdowns on the season. Right. No, by I, finding a way. You. Ty Montgomery. Ooh, he's lined up in the backfield next to Dalvin Cook. They're spelling Ramondre. Are they going to hand it off to Ty? Are they going to hand it off to Cook? Oh no, wait. Ty is now rolling out, and now he's in the slot. And now you've yeah. got a running back who can cook people from the slot as sort of like a slot receiver, third down back. Uh, Dalvin Cook is great with the ball in his hands, obviously in open space, soft hands. We know Ramondre is an excellent pass. It just would add confusion and cause people to have to think all the time. What are the, You could put Ty Montgomery, Dalvin Cook, yeah. and Ramondre Stevenson on the field at the same time. Right. And defensive coordinators are going to be like, what the f are they doing now? Right. You could put three running backs on the field and you end up throwing the ball, which is Correct. crazy to think. Yeah. Which, is exactly. all, which would be awesome. Exactly. Yeah. And if ESPN says that one of the strengths of this team is the interior of the offensive line. If people believe that that's one of the best, one of the best points of the team, something you recently wrote up for WEI.com play off of that run with those guys, yeah. trick people into thinking that's where it's going and then flick it outside and let your guys get it, get them in a position where the Andrews, the Unwenus, the Sos, the Mafis, all your bit 350 pounders can get out there, smash people and open right. up, open up lanes. And the again, going back to the air yards, mixed it in with it, it's a good talking point. I'm I'm glad you found this because it makes it makes sense as to how they can use their strengths and weaknesses to still be effective on offense. Because and I wrote about it today in my Patriots depth depth projection series on WEI.com. I wrote about it this morning. Uh I wrote about the offensive line and how, like you said, the interior is a strength, but the tackles are a big weakness. You don't know what's going on with Trent Brown. Uh Calvin Anderson, Riley Reef. They could be okay, but they're basically two guys who are veterans, journeymen, just kind of trying to latch on for one last mm -hmm. contract, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And Calvin Anderson, a little bit younger, but... Uh, Riley Reef is 34. Yeah, Riley Reef's 34, an old right. man. But then again, you know, a Andrew uh, Whitworth, what's his name? Um, yeah. The old Whitworth. tackle for the Rams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was 40 when he won his Super right. Bowl finally with the Rams. So right. obviously people can still play at an advanced age to a high level at the tackle spot. I, I, I just don't if think... Mac is not going to sit back there, as you saw in training well, that camp. Was, right. If if you're if those tackles, and sorry to cut you off, but if those tackles are so like not great out there, you get the ball out and quick, four, four yes. yards, five yards, bang, cook. You don't need to drop back five. No, you don't need to do a big drop. Double back fake reverse, yeah. long passes, exactly. seven step drops. That's five. Not He's not going to have five He's seconds there. in the pocket right now. Exactly. exactly. Right. So yeah, I like. I sense. think we're working on something. Yeah. If this they should call us. Ask, they should. If call this us. comes to be. First, Andy Hart's going to be like, "Oh, well, I, 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 I'm the one. I, I suggested that. I, you know, yeah. The only oh, reason why on, that it I, was on six rings, that must have been me. Must have been me. Yeah. Anything yeah. good from six rings comes from me. <laughs> uh, Andy currently enjoying we donuts after a nice fun run, or so Twitter, Twitter told me, um, and enjoying a little well earned vacation as well. But yep. if this comes to be, once again, Andy will tell you we were the first last year in town to say put Marcus Jones on offense. What happened when they did? Points got scored." We were ahead of the curve on a lot of things last year, but because we're still a little bit of an upstart, a little bit of an upcat, a little bit of an uprising on the uh, on the socials as we continue to build the Six Rings community, 
Mar mark it down right now. You heard it here first. If the Patriots adopt Chiefsian short action passing, less air yards, more creativity with a fleet of backs, receivers, tight ends, unique for formations, and more, they'll maybe borrow from the Chiefs. Bill O'Brien will be doing his thing. And you heard it here first, just like yep. you do most of your great Patriots talk. Obviously, check out Mike Cadlick stuff on the socials for Twitter right now. See him soon on threads. Same Mike handle. Cadlick. Same handle. At Mike Cadlick. Twitter. Same Android. handle. <laughs> of course, you can read all of his great stuff at WEEI.com. And I'm at Fitzy GFY all across the board. Thank you guys for listening. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share. And tell your friends to hop on board Twitter, threads, wherever you like to post. We celebrate any and all in the Patriots fan community here on Six Rings. All right, to the back end of the podcast we go. And Mike, I want to talk about something that I heard uh, midday host Andy Gresh talk about in the middle of the week this week with Foye. Uh, I think he first floated this theory by Andy Hart last week on Andy's last, Andy filled in for Foye on a day. He floated this theory by him. It got one of those like, mm, interesting, that's an intriguing theory. He's since floated it again. He worked, shopped it with Fourier a little bit. And it kind of goes something like this. And I think I'm a plus one like button subscriber to this one as well. Okay. The idea is this. Bill Belichick is now, op like this is year four, right? Post Tom Brady was four years in supposedly in the Cleveland plan that his team was to take shape, right? Yep. And now he, uh, he said it took four years really to get the team that he ultimately wanted, even though they were well ahead on the success curve with the Patriots when he first took over New England. And now this is like Belichick's Patriots 3.0, whatever you want to call it, 2.0, 3.0. Uh, and it's year four. It should be time uh, for the team to really gel and come together. His idea, Gresh's theory is that basically the Patriots now under Belichick in his pursuit of Don Shula are operating. We see these re-signings, Bentley, two-year extension, Parker, making sure he's on the team. It's shorter money, a little more guaranteed and upfront. But basically, you're building a two-year, you're doing a two-year rebuild, okay? So that's what it is. This is the Bill Belichick two-year plan. Uh, he's locking in all the pillars, all the best players that he possibly can, maybe potentially even pursuing some free agents. And if he goes after Hopkins and Cook as well, then that really means that he's making sure that he's got the best players he possibly can. Bill Belichick is going to try to get back to the playoffs and win as many games as he can over the next two years because that means he's going to get to and surpass Don Shula, get back mm -hmm. to the playoffs, make his owner happy, then turn things over as we as we sort of thought to whoever is the next head coach. Most of us think it's Gerard Mayo. The Bill Belichick two-year plan as opposed to just like, more drafting and more development, and it'll gradually come to be like, no, Belichick's going to go for it now over these next two years. And you'll see him secure the services of more high quality players uh, the best he can with the financial assistance right. of Robert Kraft, who keeps saying money will never be an issue if it comes to signing players. So we shall see. What do you think of the idea of it being a two year plan? I don't hate the the concept, and I think it makes sense, right? I mean, he's not around for a, a long-term rebuild. He's not going to be here for, I would say his cap is like five years, and I feel like that's very, that's a long time. So hmm. two-year rebuild makes sense, but if that is the case, then why wouldn't DeAndre Hopkins already be locked up? Why wouldn't it already have happened? Because he doesn't care about money that much longer in the future, and if he does have this financial flexibility, if you will, that, Robert Kraft claims to uh, to give him, I feel like DeAndre Hopkins would already be here and they would already yep. use up that money and say, let's sign him for two years. He can be here. He can be Max guy. I don't care about developing a, a long-term wide receiver for Mac Jones. I need some guy here now to get me my damn wins so I can mm -hmm. go retire on Nantucket. So look, maybe that is still in the works and maybe they do make Cook and uh, Hopkins hap happen. Excuse me. And uh, But yeah, I mean... Is Kraft going to maybe Kraft is on board with something like that? Stay here for two years, rebuild mm -hmm. this thing right now, get your yep. wins. It helps our PR that turn we this have ish around sport. right now, get me right. back to the playoffs. Right. Let's, you know, and we got we'll, the new lighthouse, the new sports lounge, the new right, everything. Right. Fix Mac Jones. Give me like fix my franchise quarterback that I wanted you to draft a couple years ago that fell into your lap in 2021 at pick 15. Yep. Build this line. Show me this. Show me your new defense. Uh, Get me some, you know, get me, surround me with some talent. 
And then I'll make sure I'll give you Bill O'Brien back. Cause I know we got to right. make up for the Patricia mess last year, whatever the plan was behind all of that. We time may never tell, and there won't be enough 30 for 30 specials or NFL inside looks on that one. Like they'll never be able to do, you could do Are a whole entire find hike. out about Malcolm Butler. I don't probably not. <laughs> I don't I'd so. rather know. I'd rather know really why he thought Patricia would work last year over Butler of any and all Patriot mysteries. I yeah. think that is the one I would most want to learn about. Why did they really think that would work last year? But see, I feel like the ant there's an answer there. And I think it's that he trusts his guys and he likes to work with. He said it before. He likes to work with people he likes and he doesn't right. Now that he's older. He doesn't have to bring in and work and coach guys he doesn't like. And I just think that it was easy for him to bring in Matt and say, hey, you're smart enough. Let's see if this can work. Yeah. You, hey, you Not, know football. Yeah, right. And it, it was the Hey, you know football and, club. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, bizarre for him to actually think that. So maybe there is a deeper answer. Maybe it is the fact that he didn't want to pay a, a top tier offensive coordinator. And now Kraft said, no, that has to happen. But no, I think the big mystery is still Malcolm Butler. And that's every time. The reason I bring it up is every time I hear Patriots Dynasty 30 for 30 ESPN docu-series on all of that stuff. My my number one thing is what the heck? Why did they not play Malcolm Butler? And I don't think we're honestly gonna find out. Yeah. Why didn't they? Uh, okay. I mean, yeah, I know that was still funny though. Patricia was potentially or allegedly involved in that decision as well. So right. maybe yeah. everything, maybe everything, uh, maybe everything will turn around and change this year just because they get they got rid of that. Hey, and maybe he can go poison the watering hole in Philadelphia and help <laughs> the best advantage the <laughs> yeah, Patriots right. will have Week One on Tom Brady Returns Day. But maybe not because he's a good defensive coach. No, he, and he's, he, he's no, he knows on the what defensive he's doing. side of the football. A little overrated. Um, if we're going to be honest, a little overrated. Okay, but as a defensive senior analyst or whatever his new job title is there, defensive he's senior pro- analyst. Yeah, so whatever. Like he's going to be fine. He's going to be solid in that role. And he would have been solid in that type of role here last year. You give him the offense, it's like, what the hell are you doing? He was a, he was a, he was an okay defensive coach here. He deserves a job in the NFL on the defensive side of the football. Mm-hmm. He doesn't deserve one on offense. So, yeah, no, he do- he doesn't. And I I think you'll probably never see that happen in the NFL again after what the Patriots went through last year, but as far as uh, and back to the the Gresh idea of Belichick's on a 2-year plan right now, and that's like the agreement be- behind the scenes maybe between him and Robert Kraft and everybody else. I buy it. I'm in on it. I yeah. like it. A succession plan into the hands of Mayo. Let Bill get his record. Let Robert Kraft and he get at least that one last something, if not maybe another AFC East championship. Eh, it's going to be kind of tough. Uh, or they can make the playoffs. Playoff. AFC no. AFC champ- each championship. I don't know, but they can get in the playoffs the next. Back year. to the, yes, they should be. I I still think they're a wild card team this year as well. Back to the playoffs would be an excellent achievement for them. Uh, a couple last last couple quick things we saw. Uh, just as we were recording the pod today, yes, we saw making its way on the socials. Uh, Tom Brady, Mac Jones, uh, this is from my buddy, uh, Brian Babs on the mic on Twitter. Um, it, Tom it Brady, posted and Mac by Jones. Devin McCourty on Instagram. If you want to go check it out and it's I'm on actually D- tweeting it as we speak. So it's on D max IG. Okay. So on Devin, McC- see what a ball player he's become. He's his own person now. No more just yeah. sharing a Twitter with his brother. Like no, D Mac is his own man. Can now we get it focused. And we got Devin McCourty with. A picture of like uh I guess you'd call it an Ussie. Yep. <laughs> uh for, for the Ted Lasso fans out there. It's an Ussy of D Mac. Look at this. Well, look at this. It's D Mac, Tom Brady, and Mac Jones. And, and it's a D Mac title. Them, Devin, what have you been doing since you retired? Me, living life. How you like that? Look at these uh, guys together. Brady, Mac Jones, and D Mac hanging out. To which I will offer this. Don't let Brady. Now, I know they competed against each other in 2021. And quite honestly, Mac Jones played every bit as well as Tom Brady did in that game. That was just. Oh, yeah. That was a tough game. That was a grind. And it was the elements that obviously and ultimately factored into the equation. And Brady's buck squeaking out the win when folks 56 yarder clanged off the left upright in the rain. Um, That was devastating. I hurt so bad. I know. <laughs> oh, it sucked. Even what also could have sucked was Brady then going down the field in like 45 seconds and then getting a new game winner and just driving yeah. a new stake in our heart. The hope so was taken away when it needed to be that night. 
What do you think Mac Jones and Tom Brady talk about when they're on vacation? Together? That's what I want. When they That's see each other social. Fly on the wall. I never like, even knew they talked. Conversations? Like, I know. I would love to know what they're talking about. I'll tell you this. I have no idea. Maybe Brady is ultimately like, yeah, I don't like seafood either. Yeah, you know, I had to live in New England for 20 years. <laughs> like, the weather sucks, right? Oh, I know. The traffic's so bad. Um, Just don't let Brady start giving, like, now that Brady's retired, out there being happy, uh, you know, building the brand, living his best life. Don't let any of the Brady magic rub off on Mac Jones. No, oh, yep. don't. don't. If he starts giving him tips and he's like, hey, try this or do this or this always worked for me or Bill likes like watch out like if and I'll say this win this game. (laughs) Here's another one right here on six rings. If Mac Jones turns it around the season, we will be able to point back to this particular moment when we saw Mac (laughs) D Mac and TB 12 TFB hanging out together, living that life. If he's able to turn it around, we will say, "Uh Oh, Brady actually started helping the Patriots yep. again. And he just just five minutes with him would even help Mac Jones immensely. Yeah. I wonder if he says to him, what was Bill thinking giving you Matt Patricia last season? <laughs> They're probably just all sharing a laugh. Like D-Mac yeah. is like, all right, guys, let's get together for a selfie. One, two, three, Patricia coordinator. And they all just <laughs> Yeah, <laugh>. right. <laughs> Patricia's offense, lol. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I like it. Yeah, that 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 that's a fun one right that's there. A good and pick. last little something I noticed. Um I just saw on NFL.com, Eric Edholm, who does a great job writing for, used to write for Yahoo now for NFL.com. He's got a piece, 2023 NFL season, predicting each AFC team's non-QB MVP. Okay. Who do you think Eric Edholm predicts as the non-QB MVP of your 2023 New England Patriots? Matthew Judon. Boom. Yeah. Ed Holm writes, the That's Patriots easy. must know they can't survive in 23 without w- w- winning shootouts. Even if the career of third-year pro Mac Jones is revived by Bill O'Brien, returning to call plays in New England after 11 seasons away, this offense is currently constructed, reads as a middling group at best. That puts an outsized responsibility on the defense in a tough division. If the Patriots are to win this season, it will be because this veteran unit thrives as it did a few years ago, making game-changing plays on the regular. Judon, Patriots' best defender past two seasons, a bit streaky from time to time, but explosive, aggressive, and instinctive. Pass rush effectiveness was at an all-time high last season, but even if he doesn't rack up 15 and a half sacks again, Judon can impact games in a number of ways and must be accounted for by opposing offenses every game. Agree or disagree? Obviously, you agree. You named him when I gave you one guess. Yeah? Yeah, I think he he's on effect in that linebacker room. Because then you allow Josh Uche to cook, and you will now allow a guy like Keon White, who I guess he's more of a, a down lineman, but he's ju- they're they're all he's a little bit. Of, he's like, got a little bit. Of, I think Keon out. White will get a little bit of everything. And don't forget, Judon has said right. he's not the best pass rusher on the team. Josh Uche has better moves and is quicker. So Judon, part of the yeah. Judon effect is being so accounted for you, because he is so you good. Free up which, Uche on the other side, yeah, and Dietrich and everyone else as well, yeah. So. Uh, that is a quality call right there. If there were one oh, other right. non QB so, yeah. no, MVP on the Pats, if you had to, if you had to throw your name on one other non QB MVP on the Patriots this season, would it be Ramondre? Would it be on offense or defense? Who might it be for you? Ramondre. I think it's Ramon. I think he's there. He- but I don't think run. And we talked about this on radio this weekend. I don't think running backs really matter. Like, look, you're not going to have as much success with Pierre Strong as you would Ramondre Stevenson, but, like, I don't think he fully dictates which way your offense is going to go. So, no, I'm not going Ramondre. I'm going to go with one Kyle Duggar. Ooh. Because. Contract, see, and I've floated he by is, heart as well. Patriots have a lot of contract year guys that are going to be looking that are going to be looking to make a mint, and they're all going to be busting ass playing contract year yeah. style football. The New England Patriots may – I don't know how it'll look next year, but in 2023, they may significantly benefit from balling out seasons from a lot of contract year guys. That maybe that's Belichick's two year plan. Get guys in contract. You want to make money. They're going to kick ass for me and I'm going to get my damn wins total. And I'm there. It is higher on the boat. So yeah, there it is, buddy. So Kyle Duggar going with Doug's. All right. Kyle Duggar, solid choice. All right. And that wraps up another edition here of six rings and football things. Brought to you by WEI Odyssey and 2400 Sports.
Good job, producer. Justin Turpin, as always. For Mike Cadlick, filling in nobly for Andy Hart. This is your old pal, Nick Fitzy Stevens. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much for being a part of our growing Patriots discussion. Fan-oriented, analytical, information-packed, and just plain joyful football fan community. Uh, you can find us, as always, on Spotify, the Odyssey app, Apple Podcast, WEI.com, and more. We will talk to you soon, just a little under three weeks away from training camp. Football is just over two months away. What a time to be alive. Soak up the sun. Enjoy your summer. Catch you later. As always, good day, God bless, and go Pats. Go Pats.